You hear me, Hannah? Okay. Awesome. Thanks, cool. Steve. We'll turn it over to you. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I am Steve Schmidt. I am head of commercial revenue at Reggie AI. We are a generative AI company. Uh, so if you think about writing content, especially for salespeople, there's usually the idea that they're they're writing. Um, if you've ever heard the word sequences or cadences before, it's it's a series of touch points where we're trying to go out to our ICP, your ideal client profile. <clears throat> pardon me, and no better place to do that, especially in software sales. But it really goes across multiple industries, whether that's ed tech, food tech, um, religious tech. I mean, there's a lot of people on, on, on LinkedIn now. And I think that you'd be surprised if you haven't looked yet at your own total addressable market and how many people are, are, are online. But the secret is usually if they're online, what does that mean? I guess the example you could give is if, if you're on a dating app, but the person's not ever logging in, it doesn't matter if you get a match or not. Like it, it, they have to be active. And so it's really trying to get into an active community where, where you can be visible with content and, and then know how to engage. And I just released a training course because what I found was a lot of people know what LinkedIn is. They know what LinkedIn sales navigator is, but they don't really have a workflow or a concept of how to work within it. So today, what I wanted to do is I'm just share my screens out and just talk about like what LinkedIn sales navigator is. And probably more importantly, you know what it is not. And so I'm going to share out my whole desktop here real quick and um, just confirming that you guys can see Taylor, correct? Yes, looks good. <laughs> so you can see plain old LinkedIn here. So a couple of things, that's LinkedIn. This is LinkedIn sales navigator. Obviously sales navigator is a product of LinkedIn, and it's been around, man, for probably 15 years. I've been using it for every second of every day of that time. And I think what I found early on is it's just a really easy place for me to assemble uh, the total addressable market and start to get a basis. And, and the example I'll use, and then we'll cut over real quick here and, and talk a little bit about the profile just for 30 seconds, is um, I, I founded a company in 2020. We had to go out and sell, you know, services uh, without outsourced appointment setting, for lack of a better term. And there was two things that really helped accelerate that. Number one was going outbound to call it the TAM and the ICP that what we configured. And I'll show you how we did that in Sales Navigator. But probably more importantly was once you connect with them, we all hear this idea of, oh, people got to create content. You got to post up. It's like, okay, how are you supposed to interact with them if you're not a content creator? There's a lot of other ways you can interact by being a commenter. You can interact by watching other people interact and then reaching out with a direct message if you don't feel comfortable doing any of that. So you don't need to be a content creator. That is the journey I took. And so I just want to show you some stats. I look at this not as a like a brag book, but more of a journey book. Because I took out the journey on creating content as a function of Sales Navigator. So just real quick... I can look and say, for example, post impressions over the last seven days. Well, what does that mean? Who cares? I can say, well, over the last 365 days, and that matters to me because I want to understand that my content is resonating within the ICP and the personas that I'm selling into. How do I check that? I just go to the audience tab right here. And then you're, it's very easy to see that not only in the last seven days, founder, CEO, co-founder, which is my ICP, over the last 365 days, you know, writing one or two pieces of content a day, having over 900 now, it's definitely landed on the ears and the eyes, not by accident, of the people who I wanted to connect with. They, I'd say 80% of these connections have all been me going out and initiating the discussion. The other 20% have come by a connection because they want to either, you know, follow the content and they send a nice note, or maybe they're trying to sell something to you. So like there's big events that happen, you know, job changes, announcement that will always spike up. But I just look for consistency, right? And I did notice that, you know, I took the C out of my title and then, you know, you know, likes and comments went down naturally because less people are trying to like sell to you and you're, you're less of a name. And I'm okay with that because what I, I found is I looked back and we're actually getting more leads from content, i.e. LinkedIn than ever. And they're better quality. They're not just, you know, looking to have a conversation. So I wanted to first address that to say it all really ties in. Because when I go over to LinkedIn Sales Navigator, oh, there's one more area I wanted to touch on here. Sorry. I, I wanted to show you something that I think is a, a really important to have in your profile. So if I back up, um, there's a lot of content that I have off of LinkedIn. And you too, you'd probably do too, whether it's, you know, Chuck Shaver, whether it's you have 
you know, your page for your company, or you have a YouTube channel with micro um, shorts or whatever, this little about me area is very critical. You can edit this by just going here. And I put a link tree there. So for example, when people click this instead of about me, and it goes to my company page, not that I don't like my company, I just have multiple things here. So I use Linktree. There's other sites that host um, these easy links. And so like, here's a training course. There's one-on-one -on -one time you can book. There's you know a LinkedIn post that talks about something I released. There's a free framework. And nothing here besides maybe one or two things actually cost anybody any money. Most of it's saying like, hey, Instagram's here, you know, TikTok. I really am saying it's okay to not stay on LinkedIn. I'd love for you to come into the other areas. And then I can look at the analytics of that on the back end and figure out where people are going the most. And, and none of you should be surprised to know it's never the company you work for that usually makes the first place. It's usually anything else because nobody really wants to know that. Um, they can benefit and probably will buy from you if they have a need, but that's not what they're there for. They're there because they're innately curious about you. So for example, like I can get into a training course here very easily and then pull that up. And then someone could say, great, I want to buy your training course. It looks great. I followed your content journey. They could do that there. So I wanted to show you again, Linktree, a super powerful. I think I have nine links here. I probably need to clean it up, but real simple. Took me about 30 minutes, cost me eight bucks a month. I use this and this has already made a lot of money because they'll specifically say, hey, I clicked on your link and I was happy to see this. And then I ended up in your inbox somehow. And so again, just really touching on how to present yourself really high level, but that's that's a little hack I like to teach people. Um, now in Sales Navigator, I got to cover this quickly. There's five areas I want to show you today. So if you're in Sales Navigator for the first time, you probably know that you need to create a lead list or an account list. So I want to talk about real quickly what that means. And I'm going to come back out to this page and we're going to look at this news feed because I always say this is the news feed that will make you money. My other LinkedIn feed is nice if I'm bored or if I want to peruse great content and maybe I'll dig something up. But these are the people who I'm targeting and so now I have a very nice LinkedIn feed of everybody who I'm connected with. And I can look at that from different perspectives. I can look by what's most relevant, what's the latest. And then what I do is every morning I go through here and I'll literally go through and say, okay, this guy's someone who's in my, my ICP. I'm going to go look at his post and see if it's worth engaging or not. Here's another one and another one. And you kind of go through that and say every day, there's about 20 or 30 things I do to start off my day, whether it's liking and commenting genuinely on a post I move those all over here by just bookmark them. So if I've got a comment on all these, I just hit bookmark, bookmark, and they go into my bookmarked alerts. And then I literally just go into my bookmark queue for that day and I just start clearing them out, right? So you'd go into here and say, okay, this person viewed your profile, accepted your connection request. What do you do next? I always send a video after someone connects with me and just say, hey, Steve Schmidt, if there's anything I can do to enhance your network or introduce you to somebody, let me know. Otherwise, it's great to be connected with you. And that's all I say, because the goal is to get them to want to see the content. And I'm on the front page of their newspaper, top of mind, maybe every day, which is exactly what we're trying to use LinkedIn for. And so that's like my feed. Now, if I were to go in and build a lead list out, especially called for the first time, there's an area over here that LinkedIn just introduced called personas. I really like it. I think it's a little bit lacking because it's not very robust, but you can create the personas that you call into. And then every time somebody's going to fit that persona, it's going to get automatically saved in your list. And so you won't have to think about it. So I have a director level persona. I have a CXO. And now it looks like they're letting you create a third, which is great because I could enter a third here. And so I can enter, you know, vice president of marketing. And I want their function to be marketing. I want their seniority level as you go through here to be, you know, CXO or, you know, C level. And then if I went through here, I would want that to be CMO, right? You're the chief marketing officer. Geography is a US. Now there's a couple of things here that aren't awesome. I could set my personas there and save it. And then it's going to pull up and show me everybody who's in that persona. There's 39 people who I have who meet that what I would do then if I wanted to expand upon that is I could then say, okay, here's everybody who I know that's in my existing list. If I wanted to go out and further filter that down and say the company type, the industry type, I can now do that at the account level and say, I'm really only looking for those personas in software. 
And then you can look at different, you know, software development. Um, there's a lot of, you know, I'm not going to get into that today with the, the, the robustness of getting this right, but you can now distill that down and then go back over. And, I, and, and really like one of the simpler things I can teach people is here's your accounts, here's your leads, and you can toggle back and forth between the two. Whatever you're setting up at the account level should carry over to the lead level. So here, like if you're going to look for CMOs and software development, I only have one filter applied here. And so now I have to keep building those filters out and I'm back to kind of looking at scratch with 16 million people. It's way too many. So I have to distill that down. So again, if you wanted to go back to that persona level and I now have vice president of marketing, I could just go in here and it's going to pull that list up and say, Steve, you have 39 of those people who are already in your, your saved list today. And I'd say, wow, I got to get a lot more because if I need to sell 30 deals this year, I better talk to more than 39 people. And so that's one way to sort of check your own, call it your network. And I'll show you one more. So if I went into the CXO role here, which is something that, you know, I, this is a call point that we call on quite a bit. This is where I've spent a lot of time. And out of these 388 results, we've had nine deals that have closed out of that ICP that came from this list. And so that's one that I feed often. And that is the CEO, my other persona is CMO, and the other persona is director of sales and marketing. And so that's how I look at this list and start to get the list. And then I go, well, what do I do with the list, Steve? That sounds great, but I don't really know what to do now that I have a list. And I'd say, okay, the only thing I like to teach people is there's a few things, is if you're developing a list for the first time, the very first thing you should do is you start to connect with them. And by doing that here, you're saying, I want to have a fighting chance at getting 30 to 40% of these people to connect with me because they're in my TAM or my ICP. Very easy. That's all you got to do. Just go and connect with them. And someone might say, well, Steve, aren't you going to research them? And I say, you know what? I don't have time to research 20 people every day. I'm really researching this space. And quite frankly, I'm looking for, and I'm going to show you now on an account list into leads. What I really want to do is say, I want to go into my active leads and at any time, you can now look at these people and sort them and filter them by these pre-organized um, pre categories, right? Once you develop accounts, you're developing leads, accounts are accounts, businesses, leads are people. As you can see here, I would go, okay, these are everybody that I'm connected with. They're all first degree. Two of them have changed jobs. Five of them have been mentioned in, in the last 30 days. Now, this is where you can start to say, this is actionable. 49 people out of these 90 have even posted in the last 30 days. I'm sure they're logging on more, i.e. this little green dot will tell you if they're online. And I usually look for that as a good indicator, but it doesn't mean that they don't still log in once or twice a day. She's probably active. Now, if I go here, these are my people who are very active and they posted something in the last 30 days. I could then distill all of my list to say, I only want to talk to people with the title CEO who have posted in the last 30 days. And that's all I want to view. Because now I know they're probably seeing my content. I'm going to go look at theirs and we can start to call it flirt at the top of the funnel to see if there's some interest there. And then, of course, we have other tabs like shared experiences and you can get into that. And I usually say, if I had to back up and show you that motion alone of creating an account list and then a lead list and then the simple motion of connecting with those people and then looking at your feed to say, Who's coming in and accepting your connection request? Who's sharing information out? Treat this like a lot of people treat um, their LinkedIn feeds and you'll, you'll have a great experience with it. Um, there's one more thing I wanna show you and I know I got about one more minute and then I'll, we have time for Q&A. So I'm kind of talking nonstop here because we do have a good amount of Q&A. Um, but I'm gonna show you an account and how I would research that account. So, Right here, you can see that there are seven personas within this account security scorecard. This is everything you'd want to know out about the account. That's great, right? We can see that they have employees, decision makers, you know, these personas that I have who in my personas is, is in there. So I can start to go into the company and see who those people are. And so I also have account alerts, right? And this is everything about the account. And so this is every account alert that they would have. And I can go through and say, I want to know specifically and only with this account these items. So whether it's new decision makers who come in, people who are making uh, career changes and suggest leads, suggested leads, I can now turn off these. Although I wouldn't want to say that account news is, you know, something you wouldn't look at. That's super important. 
Because now whatever's in this news, I can very quickly skim it and then just say, for example, the strategy is a wonderful maker of objectives and outcomes of a real kick rate. Is that anything that would help me to better personalize a message or be aware of before I come to this company? And if it's not, then I move on. And so I do spend about 20 to 30 minutes just perusing through this, um, the alerts. And if I get into an account like this and I'm interested now, I'm going to set up those alerts for it. Now, LinkedIn does a really good job of also telling you, here's three companies who are just like this account. CrowdStrike, BitSite, why don't I save those accounts too? Because I'm going to want to look at them and I'd say, great, save it to my account list. Now I know that I can go out and flesh out that account and start to get leads from it. And I could research more on it right here if I wanted to, but I'm going to show you the last item here, which is the most valuable out of everything, I, I firmly believe it, is here is the growth insights. There's a lot of non-growing happening right now, but people are still hiring. So I can make some pretty good, you know, I can, I can reduce this to, to, to fact and data pretty well when I start to see their hiring trends. Number one, what is the distribution and headcount across departments? And has it gone up or down? Everything's gone down. It's a recession. They are in that recession. Sales is taking the biggest uh, impact. So if I looked at sales, there's 3% growth year over year, but in the last six months down 8%. What story does that start to tell? It would also say that sales and engineering, engineering still, you know, it's stable. It's taken the least of a hit out of anything other than IT. So they must have a lot of engineering resources that are important to them. Who are they hiring into the company right now? Barely anybody. This is like a lot of people, right? So we know that there's not a lot of hiring happening. What job openings, if any, are there? And are they getting filled? And then the personas, as we break down into that, how many leads do we have? So here I could say CXO, there's two leads here. I can click on that, go right into that and say, okay, here's the people I want to talk to. I'm going to connect. It's already pending. And I'm going to connect. And then I am now connected at the upper echelon. I would then go out to do one last motion. So I'm going to show you that real quick. This is one of my favorite ones, and this is the account map. And so as you can see here, I, on this same account here, security scorecard, if I went way to the top, this is how much information LinkedIn Sales Navigator gets you. It's going to show everybody who's in this persona. Here's all my directors. I could go connect, connect, connect. And then I you know, obviously have more work to do beyond that. Here, I now have an account map. I love the account map because it lets me understand where I need to be calling on and what the pecking order is. So for example, I'm going to take Daj here and put him as a tier one lead because he's head of the country. I would then take anybody who's a VP reporting into that and then say they're tier two. And then LinkedIn is going to do a really great job and start to arrange these for me as I feel my way out. Like what is the mapping on the account? And so here I now know that I've got someone at the top, people who report into he or she, and now I can go connect across and I have an account map that can be very robust and be as big left to right as possible. But now I know I have about 14 people that I'm trying to connect with. I'll connect with about six to eight of them. And that's good because they're all people who are within my persona and they're all people who I want to connect with. So they're in my LinkedIn feed every day and now they're seeing me and I'm seeing them. So if they click into my profile, go into that about us section, start to see some other content the whole idea is I want to look so different than everybody else by giving them so much content to give them a lot of what they need before they ever talk to me that that's what would make them want to talk to me. So that's my high level um, review, just hopefully four or five things that can really help you understand this a little bit better. Again, it's a lot of information, a lot of great insights that LinkedIn Sales Navigator has to offer, including other accounts that you should be calling on outside of the one you think you should be calling on. Um, so I'm going to end there and see what Q&A might, uh, might there be. And uh, hopefully we'll learn as much during this as we did during me not shutting up for 15 minutes straight. So thank you. Steve, that's awesome. I, I am excited to watch the recording because I definitely did not ingest everything that you said, but it was amazing. Like, I'm super excited about this. Um, I think there are a couple of questions in the chat already. I would suggest that people, you can throw your questions in the chat and we can also share that with Steve as um, something that he can address on an individual basis if needed. But first question that I see in there, Steve, for you is uh, from Dallin asking about whether you use shared experiences and if so, do you have any tips? 
Yeah, um, I don't because the shared experiences can mean just about anything from, you know, college to you worked somewhere. I, I, I mean, I've, I've used it, but it is not a filter that I use a lot, right? Because I'm, well, I'm also old. So I've, I've worked at like 12 places in 26 years. Some shorter than others, somewhere, you know, I'm, I'm in, a, in a community. So it lists that I work there when like Pavilion, for example, would be a shared experience because I have a list on my profile. That doesn't do me a lot of good, but it does connect me with other Pavilion members, which is really great. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit of a follow-up. Do you use, you do you utilize InMail with these accounts? I do. I think InMail has a negative view because people were treating it um, very much like a sales pitch where I, I, I think when you treat in mail um, to personalize the heck out of it and not necessarily make it about selling, but be okay with letting them know what you do because they know what you're doing. They know you're connecting. Some people feel like, oh, I'm going to wait. Um, I don't pitch anything in my in mails. I try and say, hey, I want to add value to your network. This is who's in mine. You need an intro, great. And then once they're connected, I'm trying to use the content as the hook. Now, other people might say, that's great, Steve. I want to hook them with a much more direct in-mail because I'm phone calls and everything too. But yes, they can be very effective. Um, except rates right now are just shy of 50%. And out of that, um, it does breed some great conversation. So in-mail can be very productive. You have a max um, monthly amount, but those in-mails, I believe... Chuck Shaver, I think you're still there. Um, hold me uh, accountable. If an email isn't accepted, it does not count as an email towards your total goal. Um, and so, like I said, keep me honest on that, but they've been very productive for me. Okay, that's great. I, um, I, the you, ruling on in mail is if they accept it, then it gives you that credit back. So you're you're given uh, you get you're given so many that you can send out every month and. So you tick one off every time you send it out. And that's a very limited number. So depending on the package that you have. So um, but you can it, actually you can actually send free in mails if you're part of a group or a part of a group. Yeah. That's the way you get around it. Right. Yeah. Right, within right, the right. within the group. Yeah. If you're in a group, you can send in mails. And there's also um uh, an upload feature, right? So you can also upload Excel sheets of contacts and connect with, you know, thousands of people at once. The problem is, is that's going to be an email that they get. And they're not going to get that. They actually, they that. actually stopped doing that. Oh, they did. Okay. That's a recent yeah. change. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I do email LinkedIn automations. And so I don't, I have a way to send 150 to 200 invites a day, but I yep. used to be able to take the email addresses and port them into my platform that I use. And then it would send them an email to join. And they stopped doing that because too many people are, are getting around the, uh, getting around it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Uh, they, they're they buckling down for sure. Steve, yeah. there was an, one of the other questions uh, around that was uh, from Eric Gosink on whether you yeah. customize like an invite message when you connect with somebody. Do you find that as being effective and something that you do? Yeah, so if I were an SDR, you know, number one, I'd change my profile headline and talk to Chuck Shaber about what I would need to do to remake that because um, CEOs don't necessarily want to have more SDR connections. And that's not a knock on SDRs. It's, I feel if you do your profile the right way and it's presenting that for me, because I'm using daily content, I don't like to write it because I, I don't want to blow my chance by pitching them that they could, you know, have content that eventually persuades them into a conversation that it might be a good idea. So I don't like it. Other people would swear for it. I would not swear against it, but I'm somewhere in the middle. So I think it's more about what you, what works for you. Like, are you the person who wants to be very upfront and forward? Or are you someone who wants to get to know them over time? Do you have content to reference? If not, then I would definitely just, you know, call it, be very forthright, write a great email and tell them what you're, what you do. And they'll let you know if that's something that they're interested in, in chatting with you about. Great approach. Appreciate that. Um, Cam asked, how do you avoid LinkedIn jail? I don't use any bots. I did for about a month and that, I'm not saying anything proactive or, or, or unactive other than I've been shut down every time I've used bots, even very conservatively. And um, the amount of like 100% of my, my uh, call it lead gen comes from LinkedIn these days. So I don't want to get shut down. So I don't mess around with that. I have been shut down. The last time was for two days and we figured that was about $42,000 of 
of funnel that we lost because we weren't on LinkedIn. And that, that was a weird day that I felt I was finally like addicted to the platform from a business perspective because we were freaking out. Um, so I've yeah. not used a bot since. Yeah, I, Steve, just so you know, I, I've been doing this for a while. And uh, if, if you have a, a bot system, it looks like a bot, they'll, they'll determine it and they'll shut you down or they ask yep. for proof of life. Um, I'm using one that where I can send out 400 a day and knock on wood, I've been doing this for a year and a half and it doesn't know, it, it goes bypasses the whole 100 per week and lets me send out for my clients and myself up to four to four, four, 450. But I originally do about 150 to 200 a day. And there's a way of doing it where you're not gonna get in trouble, just like email as well. But sure. if you don't know the tools, you don't have expertise to do it. You have a great knowledge of all the stuff that I learned a lot from today, but there's some stuff there that you can do that to not get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a personal choice. Like some people are going to automate email and some people are going to write, you know, one by one. And I, that's the beauty is I don't know if there's a right way to do it. There's certainly more efficient ways. Yeah. Well, um, there's a right way to, to, to connect, but the whole, after you connect and thank them for connecting, that should be as more personalized as much as possible. You're, you're taking up someone's time and stuff. When you get over too much of bots and too much canned messages, people are like, dude, leave me alone. This is ridiculous. So that's where you got to open a door and then make that personal connection. The way that I catch that is I put an icon in my name. So I have yeah. a little bicycle. It, so that, little, yeah. I, yep. it, it comes in and it just, uh, if I, I know that they're not talking to me, it's yeah. just some, some drip campaign they have me in because it shows a bicycle Robert or and I'm just like, okay, you don't know me. So that's a very, very easy way of kind of filtering yeah. that. I would recommend that to everybody. Anyway, that's yeah. my two cents. The old emoji. Yeah, I had a magnet next to mine for a while. And then everybody said, why do you have a magnet? And I said, I mean, I, it, it, there's a story behind it. But yeah, it was just to see if I had a magnet that came in the email, then I would I would definitely say that that was, you know, that was a bot derived yeah. field. I, wasn't I, I will warn everyone that if you put an emoji at the front of your name, that it will hurt your SEO. Yeah, there you go. And there is messages that you should want to listen to, even if they are automated. So you can't just say every automation is, is junk, but the, the, when, it, when they start out selling you right off the bat, that's a good hint to like, listen, you don't even give a shit about yeah. what I do and who I do. You're just trying to sell me some stupid application for 30 bucks a month. So yeah. Um, one other question we've got Steve from Brad asking about um, maybe diving in a little bit deeper to that flow you showed us when you put a video he said at what point once you connect and send a video do you follow up and try and engage your prospect uh in a sales process can you unpack that a little bit for us yeah i'm i'm, I'm a this is um like half of my managers would, would fire me if they heard this but i i don't really ever actively sell on linkedin now that is not saying you don't need to I, i'm looking at it more like a call it at this point of more of a lifetime of work and trying to build up I guess um, reputation in the in the domain, right? So I'm not necessarily looking to say, "Hey, there's a prospect I'm going to connect with you now." If I see somebody talking about it out in public, like something I do, and 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 Chuck, this is something that, like, you know, when I walk into a room, I always say, "Okay, what is the topic we're talking about?" Right? And let's say it was AI content generation. I just type that into LinkedIn in the search bar there. And I say, who's talking about AI content generation today? God forbid, you know, who's posting about it? Now I search by people, posts. Oh, shoot, there's me. Um, so I was talking about it. This guy's talking about it. And I just kind of go through this every day. HubSpot released their new, you know, this is uh, Dar Darmesh yesterday for chat spot. So I'm looking for prospects and customers talking about things, though. So you really got to be tricky with the words you use. And so like, you can go through this whole thing and say like, where in here is any value for me? Oh, there isn't any. Okay, great. Now there's other apps that you can get and do keyword alerts and searches and all that stuff. That's great, right? So anytime somebody says this, I want to be alerted. That's not native to LinkedIn, but it absolutely is available and it's available out there for you. Um, Shay's obviously a big video developer. She was talking about it. She's got quite the following, right? So now if I were saying... Um, Someone say a rant, like someone talk about their space that isn't mine. And, and let's just put a topic in just to see what LinkedIn might come up with. Go to market. Okay. So go to market, GTM. 
So go to market. Obviously, a lot of people are talking about it. So obviously, if I just typed in go to market, there's Amy. She's obviously talking about it. So I can sort by, you know, the top match, you know, I can search by people and all that stuff. And so I could go to the most popular post on go to market. And so that's the top match. Or I can go to the latest one and start to filter and look through that way. And that's the, about the extent of the research that I'm going to put 20 to 30 minutes in each day beyond going into do the account-based research. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's probably one of the best areas for me that that's free right in front of everybody that says, hey, who's out there talking about your space on a daily basis? And I said, how often do you check it? A lot of them go, gosh, I don't really check it. I go, that's one thing you could do that takes a minute is just see if anybody's out there saying, does anybody know anything about this? Or I'm in this space, I'm looking for this, or I'm complaining about something and your solution can fix it. it and, and that's where I do a lot of my research. That's great, Steve. I, I think one more, one question maybe before we start wrapping up, um, James asked how Reggie.ai comes into this activity. I know you said, you said you're not selling on LinkedIn, but maybe you can give us a little bit of insight on Reggie AI. So I'm always selling. Yeah. So not to like, like this guy, you know, Mablin Beck is a CEO of a new uh, startup sales affinity. Um, so I'm connected with him and, and I would use personality AI here that, that tells me off the bat and sorry, it's taking a little bit long with the leg. I'm on a hot spot and we got the video here, but essentially this is going to the bake out and tell me exactly how I should be communicating with Mablon Beck. So I'm taking the Reggie Chrome extension here. It's going to give me communication advice that tells me, you guys remember Crystal knows it all where it told you a lot about a person without really knowing them. This has now gotten to be a little bit of the next level where these are the do's and don'ts, right? So, hey, I can look at this and I look at this before I meet with somebody, you know, whether I'm meeting with them for the first time or, or on a phone call, a cold call or an email, this is saying, you know, and then this is Matt Lombeck, penetrating questions, right? Like he's going to get very deep, be formal objective. Don't try to build a relationship. Don't be very emotional. Avoid phrases like, trust me. So I'm going to get to the point. He's ROI driven. He's an information seeker. And then I would just go here and say, I need Reggie to help me write something personal here. So I would just pick this field, this field. And I have three boxes here. And this is mimicking the three by three. So it's three points of research in three minutes. But this is where I optimize and get efficient because now I customize this down and say, I really want to talk about writing better sales emails. That's not quite the value, but let's just say, AI and sequence development is, is shorthand what I want to talk to him about. I could say, I need you to write that whole message. And Reggie's going to give me three ideas on what to write him in a personalized manner, written and tuned to the way that he receives the information. So that's where Reggie comes in. And you'll see here, it's going to come up with three messages to say, hey, send this to Mavlon back. And I might say, I like most of it. I'm going to edit some things. But now I can very quickly, um, you know, call it message via email. I use this all the time. Or if I'm going to reach out to somebody, now I have this and I can just take this, move it over to my messenger. And now I'm off and running where this message is now in here. And I can start to play around with it and say, this is, isn't quite me, but at least it gives me a really good basis is on what's important chat? to that persona. Is this using chat GPI, GPT as an engine or your own engine? Uh, a little bit of both open AI, chat GPT three. Um, and then we use Reggie and we have massive amounts of thousands of pivot tables on what's actually working across outreach sales loft and Reggie uh, up to that second. And so he's a CEO. And so we're going to say what language pitching our product drives value to the persona of a CEO. And that's what it's going to thread through here and then tune it to his personality AI. So cool. Um, We've come a long ways, haven't we? It's kind of crazy. Yeah, this is amazing. Steve, I, we're a little bit past time, but that means that the the content and the questions were great. Really appreciate you doing this and sharing this with us. Um, if people have additional questions or would like to find out more, what's the best way to contact you? Probably LinkedIn, right? Probably LinkedIn. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep the LinkedIn pitch. Yeah, Steve Schmidt on here. You can get to Chuck Shaver and me live in the same small town as Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So we're probably two of the four or five people you might meet on LinkedIn from Sioux Falls. Um, but yeah, you can meet me right here. I'm the, the guy with the black and white photo. So hard to miss. And we're about to get buried under a foot of snow. So we're not going anywhere. So we're I here. I can't to wait. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Again. But thank you for having hey, me, everybody. We've, um, I, I, we've I really got the three people on LinkedIn in Sioux, Sioux City or Sioux Falls, I guess. 
Oh, you do. Sorry, yeah. one one just said that he's from Sioux City. I guess that's different, but that's pretty uh, close. We call it Sewer City, but that's about an hour south of here. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, Steve, thanks so much. Really appreciate this. Yeah. Um, we'll have this recording up on the Midday Connect um, in the next day or so. And really appreciate your insight. Thanks for spending some time with the group. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody next week at the same time. Um, and look for an email with our, our presenter and we'll find you on LinkedIn. But thanks everybody for joining. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you for having thanks, me. Take everybody. care. Thanks all.